God bless everyone. Thank you for tuning in to Firearms of America. Another video from a firearms channel for the glory of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And I'm sorry, I know some people are going to be disappointed once again, but add yourself to the list of everyone who is, who has been disappointed with everything I'm doing, everything I'm saying in the past six months, nine months, ever since I made a decision. Yeah, it really wasn't me making a decision. More so of everything around me leading me. And of course, now I understand clearly that it was Christ Jesus leading me on this path to end up sitting here and making these videos. So God bless everyone. Thank you for tuning in. The previous video that I've made about faith, I cannot comment, comment back, and uh, I cannot even see the comments. Luckily, I uh, do have another channel, so I was able to see the comments. I'll respond to the comments using another channel, so I wanted to give you a heads up before doing that. So, <laughs> <laughs> you don't think it's weird, but I wanted to uh, say I appreciate everyone's comments. People with your support. First of all, I appreciate your support and financial support. I I'd rather please not receive. I'm grateful. I'm very grateful, but I'd rather please not receive it because money is a source of problems I know for a lot of people and they've been for me not that I had a lot of money or anything like this and I'm grateful that I haven't but looking back at everything that I was doing and that was one of my goals I'm an immigrant that's why I came to this country American dream chasing success was my number one goal that's it I did not see anything else it was number one thing to do, to chase success. Don't get me wrong, I wanted to do good. And a lot of things, a lot of businesses I started along the way, I wanted to do good. I have a personal, personal training studio because, yeah, a lot of you know, people eat unhealthy diets and this and that. Living unhealthy, sedentary lifestyles. I had a cleaning business. I had IT business for a long time, for 15 years, but yeah, 15 years, wow, time flies. Dozens of businesses, because I wanted to just have financial freedom, that was a goal, financial freedom, but there's no such thing. There's no such thing as financial freedom, because that success, financial success, the success in the world of the flesh, in the materialistic world of the flesh, the accumulation of wealth, does not give you freedom. You give your soul, for, you sell your soul for it. You give your time for it. The time that you could have done literally everything else. And again, don't get me wrong, I'm not regretting anything because it is through that path that I was able to grow stronger in faith. And if you do want to support me, then please pray. That's what I would ask because I do believe in the power of the prayer. I know the power of the prayer. I know the power of the prayer and I was one of the people, number one, to tell you that prayer is useless. Maybe not even, not too long ago, a few years ago, I would have told you that. But now I know for sure. I know the power of the prayer. So yeah, if you can, pray. Pray for the church. Because everyone I know who is part of the church, my brothers, 
a lot of them, <laughs> a few of them, are making a decision to walk away, similar to what I've done about nine months ago. And they are all being aggressively attacked by the Satan. And when I say attacked by the Satan, I know my brothers, sisters who are watching these videos, they will understand. But people who are still growing in their faith, maybe, or curious, or maybe they don't believe in God. I'm not talking about this horny dude, like, trying around, like, red, you know, with, like, tail and stuff. Like, trying to, like, do something. No, Satan attacks us through the flesh people that are around us, materialistic stuff that is around us. But the problem is, materialistic stuff, it doesn't have the breath of life. But people do. But because they're still in the flesh, and through flesh, the ruler of this world, Satan, they try to drag you back in, back into the world of the flesh, make you more dependent on the things that are in the materialistic world of the flesh. And that's really what I wanted to talk about in this video. Being dependent on the world of the flesh. Chasing success in the world of the flesh. Because the more you chase the success, the more you accumulate, the more expectations come right back at you from the world of the flesh, from the people that are around you. And in fact, the more you have, the more you attract people who are desiring this materialistic stuff. And ask yourself a question. Is it the people that you want around you? Is it the people that you want to rely on, to trust? The people that are next to you, the people that really pretend to be your friends, pretend to have genuine relationships with you, because they extract some kind of benefit out of you. And it is, it goes both ways. It's not just these people, it is also you. Because at first you say, well, you know, I have financial responsibilities, I have this, I have that, I need a house, you know, as, let's say you're, you know, as a teenager coming out of the college. Well, I need to do this, I need to do that. So you start working, you start sacrificing your time while working for somebody, giving your time away, giving your attention away for... 40 hours a week, 8 days, I mean, and I mean, it's just being there. That's most, most of the times how every job is. And again, I'm not saying that this is not what you're supposed to do. Please don't get me wrong. But this is the nature of the world of the flesh. This is how it gets you. You start with something. And this is why I have my rifle, because it's easier for me to talk in firearms. This is after all firearms channel. Every household needs an AR-15, right? That's what we, as a Second Amendment community, we think about. Every household needs an AR-15. So of course, you want to start with a quality AR-15, a combat-ready AR-15, something that is not going to let you down if you really need to defend your household from the threat, you know, when, as an immigrant, I was taking an oath na during the naturalization ceremony. And as part of the oath, you swear to take up on arms, sorry, English, not my first language. So to take on arms if there is an international or domestic threat or outside or domestic threat, but you get the point. So, yeah, of course, as an immigrant especially, 
I always thought, yeah, of course, I need to have a quality AR-15. So you get yourself a quality AR-15. It's not cheap. So you work hard, and you get yourself a quality, combat-ready, Daniel Defense M4A1 R3, right? You start with this. Okay, great. Now you have a fantastic rifle. Well, you do need the sights in order to shoot, right? Can't do it without the sights. I mean, after all, no matter how good the rifle is, it's useless without the sights. So, you can't buy them cheap plastic mag pools, flip up. I mean, you can, but come on. You spend, what, two grand on the rifle? Now you're gonna get yourself a $25 plastic flip up sight? No, you want something that is combat ready, that is reliable, that is not gonna let you down when you bury it in the snow and take it out of the snow and try to address the threat, it's not gonna turn off on you because it got too cold, all right? So you need something serious. You can get yourself a tiny little small red dot, well, but then you compromise on the range that you can have with your rifle because a uh, quality AR-15 like this with a quality ammo, which is another thing, again, if you get a cheap ammo, you compromise on the capabilities of the AR-15. So you get yourself a very expensive low power variable optic. Well, you still need a red dot just in case if you have a CQB situation. So you get yourself again an expensive red dot because, well, it's all quality, it's supposed to be combat ready. So you get that. And then you're still not satisfied because there is no suppressor, because there is no IR sight, because there is no or IR laser, because. And then we're talking about the full loadout, your plate carrier, your helmet, your battle belt, your... So you see, it never ends. It never ends. It literally never ends. No matter how much you stuff you have, you're not going to be satisfied. But the problem is, with all that stuff, with all the time that you invest in order to obtain this materialistic stuff, the world has expectations. Just like with this channel, people watching it, oh, this guy is now doing this, is now doing drills. Uh, well, this is not good enough. Get better. So I work harder and I try to get better. Because, well, people watching these videos, they have expectations. And then I get better. And then there is now a new, what is called, the viewership. The new, more experienced, in combat, viewers are now more interested in this channel. Oh, okay, so this guy is now showing quality stuff. Not just some cheap pistols, but some quality things. Well, let's see. So the expectations, they always grow. And the world of the Flash is ruthless. Just think about celebrities. Think about your favorite president. Donald J. Trump, the other day, got convicted. The poor guy is now a felon. Convicted felon. It's the guy who took up the presidency of the United States for free. He said, don't pay me nothing. I will do this for free. It's a $400,000 salary. He said, I don't need it. I'm going to do this for free. And I don't think there was ever in history anyone who did that, except him. And for this, <laughs> he picks up the convicted felon. Because what? Because he did some trickery with some finances. Which, again, if you've ever been involved in business, if you ever filed taxes, you've been involved in some kind of trickery. Because if you don't do any kind of trickery, you don't do anything. You want to progress in the world of the flesh. It involves trickery. Because when you go, think about networking. What is networking? It's a trickery. Think about job interview. It's a trickery. You go to job interview. 
you present yourself better than you are. You don't sit there and say, I am a really lazy person and I love to wake up at 10 a.m. Your job starts at 9 a.m. It kind of sucks, but I'm willing to do this because I need money. Who says that? Nobody says that. We go and we trick people, business, partnerships, whatever, meetings. It's all trickery. And the same thing with same Donald J. Trump, politics. He's standing there on the stage saying all of these things, make America great again. Trickery. Yeah, of course. Guy has good intentions. Yeah, of course. Guy at the interview has good intentions. Yeah, of course. We all have good intentions. But the more we get involved in the world of the flesh, the more we have to perform. Because the more of the expectations there are from the world of the flesh of us. You cannot serve two masters and I don't want to give any bad ideas to anyone. I don't want to give any ideas to anyone. I don't even want to give any good ideas to anyone. But if you don't want to listen to me, that's fine. Read the words of Jesus Christ. He says it all. And if you still think that this is, uh, how is that even relevant? Someone who said something almost 2,000 years ago, how is that even relevant today? Well, then I invite you, disclaimer, <laughs> I invite you to say to whoever, your boyfriend, your girlfriend, your wife, your husband, your colleagues, your friends, your whatever, whoever people are around you and say, you know what, my job or my school or this particular activity that I'm doing, it takes away from my heart. My heart is not in the right place. Unless you want to say, hey, it co I compromise my relationship with God. If you want to say that, then by all means, God bless, go for it. But if you want to take it easy and test the waters out, <laughs> then this is probably the best way to do it. My heart is not in the right place doing this. My heart is not in the right place working this job. I feel like I'm compromising myself for this job. I'm compromising my time. I'm compromising my say something that people understand, values. I'm compromising my moral values for this job. I'm thinking about finding something else. I am making enough money. I can make enough money doing something else. Or maybe I already have enough money and I don't need enough money. And my family don't need enough. We have enough money. We don't need any more money. So I'm, I'm deciding to stop doing that. Or the activity. Tell your friends, oh, you know, it's not, I don't feel right in my heart going to these bars anymore and picking up these drunk girls because it just don't feel right. It don't sit right in my heart. I want to meet a woman somewhere where she's not drunk, where she's not under the influence of anything. Not because it's a bad woman, but because I want her heart to be in the right place. Not diluted with any intoxicants. It doesn't matter. Whatever you want to come out with. And see the reaction. And you'll understand what I'm talking about. You'll see it and you won't be able to unsee it. And once you do, remember, as our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ told us, you cannot serve two masters. You either serve God or you serve the money. You serve the ruler of this world. Your mind is either on the things of the spirit or your mind is on the things of the world of the flesh. So, God bless everyone and uh, 
I pray that more and more people start seeing that we do have enough. We do have enough. And we don't need nothing fancy. We don't need nothing that this materialistic world of the flesh is trying to convince us into. So, God bless, and I'll see you in the next one.